Hi everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services. I've been working with StaffPad for a couple of weeks now. You may have seen the video I did on the Rite of Spring, and now we'll write a few bars of one of my favorite songs, Vienna by Billy Joel. So let's just get to it. We're going to tap and start a blank score. StaffPad doesn't support voices at the moment, so we'll use flutes. And we will say keyed instrument, piano. I can use the pen as well. Tap, and we're ready to go. You can tap and hold anywhere, really, and um, just tap and hold for a little bit to change the key signature. B flat major, tap and hold again. Oops, key signature again. Let's do the time signature. And this one is going to be cut time. Great. I can tap and hold above the staff here to put in some text. The only other thing staff pad doesn't support right now is uh, pickup bars. So for the moment, we'll just put in the notes that precede the, or the rest rather, that precede the notes. Great, I've got my first bar in. You notice that I've overfilled the bar because it didn't pick this up as a triplet. So what I want to do is put the triplet in just like that. Now we've got some grace notes, so I'll put those in as just regular sixteenths for the time being. Oops, get rid of that. Staff pad doesn't support parenthetical notes, um, or accidentals I should say, so we'll just put those in ordinarily. So now staff pad is going to ask me for some information because it doesn't quite recognize what I've done. So sometimes it's best if you can try to train it and it'll pick up your uh, handwriting as you go along. So I'm just, in this one I'm going to say more options. I'm going to tell it that that's a flat. And now it picked it up. So hopefully in the future staff pad will learn my style of handwriting a little bit more. I'm going to tap the symbols, say the grace note. Tap that to turn it into a grace note. Oops, I can put my slur, tap outside here and put my slur in, and we'll keep on going. Eighth rest and now the nice thing is you see another overfilled bar there. You can just go with the flow. You don't have to go back and fix it right away. You know it's a triplet. That's interesting. So here's let's why don't we fix this since this is a curious case. It thought that the beam was a slur. So I'm going to use the eraser to erase it. The cool thing is I can erase this flag. Now I've got three quarters, but look if I just beam them like that, I've got three notes. I'm going to turn this into a triplet. I've got a triplet and I'm going to I'm going to have to delete this and just redraw it in as a dotted half. And I actually fixed the bar pretty easily. So staff pad won't always get it quite right. Here's a whole note. I can just add a stem. Oops. If I, I you know what happened was I dragged the note up and down, but if you're a little more careful, you can add a stem to it and it'll turn it into a you know a, a half note. Add the dot and we're going to put in the rest of the bar. And the cool thing about this demo is that you can see it's not perfect, but with a little bit of practice, you can kind of understand how it's you know, thinking about things. Put the triplet in there. Thought that that was a half note, so we're gonna just undo it and try to put it in again. There we go. And Keep on going. Great. So I've got the entire right hand in there. Hopefully I haven't made any other errors. Oh, put in this triplet as well. Okay. So I've got my first bar. Oh, let's put in a slur there and a slur on that note. And now I'm going to tap voice two and put in my second voice. So again, 
S to put in the second voice. And we're just going to keep on writing our notes here. Whoops. And you notice I'm not necessarily aligning everything precisely to the beat. Snappad automatically respaces it once I'm out of the bar. Oh, I can always add my other accidental there. And you notice this is kind of a crazy looking slur, but the point of Snappad is not to get fine engraving. The point is to get something that's rather acceptable for the most part. And if you always want it, you can export it into XML, um, into Finale or Sibelius or whatever your favorite notation program is um, that has finer control over engraving rules and further tweak it there. And you can kind of see, once you get into the rhythm of it a little bit, no pun intended, you uh, can keep going. I'm going to add the dot there. Oh. All right, so again, we're going to tap on that bar and Sometimes it doesn't recognize it right away, so the best thing to do, just erase it, try to rewrite it. Sometimes in the staff is best. You can just put one augmentation dot. You don't have to put both of them. Here we are going to need to account for the half rest, so I'll put that there. Put in my chord. And change the note just like that. Cool. I'll put in some accents, might as well. Okay, and I think I've got my whole right hand in. Let's put in the left hand. That should be much simpler. Again, tap back to voice one. Put in some whole notes. Drag that down. Put in my natural. And you just can, just can see, this is kind of a live demo of what you can expect with staff pad. Again, underfilled because I tapped outside of the bar before I was done, but that's cool. All right, put that in. And I don't need to fill the bar anymore because it's not there. You can The beauty of it, you can actually just leave it alone. And I can just draw this line here. Staff pad is going to, you know, it's going to turn it yellow saying, what do you want to do with this? And actually, I'm just going to say, ignore it. And now it knows to just ignore it because it really has no function other than to tell the player to move to the top staff with the left hand. So let's hear what it sounds like. So we've got our first segment of Vienna in. You are free to keep watching if you like, but if you want to move on to other things during your day, by all means, please do. Um, but, but I'll show you a few other things if you want to keep on watching. I'm going to tap on this bar line to say change the bar line, double bar. And now I'm going to start writing in the vocal line. And, you know, this works as you would expect. This is fairly simple music, so it reads it pretty well. Uh, except for that, it thought that that tie was a rest. So I'm just going to get rid of it, put the tie in, and we can keep on going. Put in some more notes. And we'll just finish this last bar of the phrase. Great. Again, has a little trouble with the ties at first, but if you just delete it. 
Now, I want to show you something cool about this. So, so you see how these four notes are beamed together. I could, if I wanted to, I could unbeam just by uh, tapping the uh, delete. I could break that beam. And if you see, if I break these beams again, they turn into unbeamed flagged eighth notes. What's more, I could even tap this and hold, and I can delete these individual flags, and of course they turn it into quarter notes. And Staff Hat is just kind of waiting to, for me to do something with this. Now the bar is overfilled, of course. There are six quarters in the space of four. So I can do one of uh, a couple of things. I can turn that into a triplet, except it didn't recognize that as a triplet, but we'll try it again. So I can you know, turn that into two triplets. I can erase those triplets and I can rebeam these. I could turn these into 16th notes. I could break, even break the secondary beam. And so you kind of see the possibilities of how flexible it is. You don't have to really start a bar from scratch. Um, even if it makes a mistake, uh, you can keep on going. So if you're still with me, I commend you, viewer. Um, we're going to double tap and make a selection. I'm going to, I could either uh, just copy and paste the uh, conventional way, or you see this little handle here. I'm just going to drag that into there. And you see, I've got uh, a duplicate of what I did. Now I can add some extra notes over here and just kind of fill out the chord. Um, it'll even put those ties in. And we'll put in some notes here. So, you know, it, you kind of have the best of both worlds. You've got the, um, the benefit of handwriting recognition, but you also have the benefit of copy and paste like you would in a traditional notation program. And that's pretty much it. So we'll do voice two. And the payoff is really cool because we'll actually get to hear this whole thing in just a moment. Put in our half rest. Put in our chord, half rest, chord, another half rest, chord, and one more half rest, and this A flat chord. Great, except I thought that that was a whole rest, so I'm just going to get rid of it. What I'm going to have to do is put in that rest, go to voice one. Whoops. I think what we'll do in this case is just we will use the old undo, put in the rest here, and it recognized both of those uh, at once. So that worked out just fine. And finally, the left hand, and then we're done. Okay, so... Now I know that that's supposed to be a G. It'll be easy enough to just drag that down. B flat. And again, I don't have to fill in the whole bar if I don't want to. And F and A flat. Oops. So if this happens, I think the easiest thing to do sometimes is to just kind of redo it rather than try to fix it. Oops. Now that's interesting. So again, that's fixable. I can make that into a half. And I've got my half note octave A flat. Great. And then, you know, I could, if I wanted to, I could actually draw these lines in. But why don't we just play this section and then we'll be done with this little video. Cool. All right, I said we'd be done, but you notice how the flute was kind of dominating there. Now we go to our expression layer, and if I wanted to, I could draw in a little bit of expression. Just for a little bit more subtle shading. So that's kind of a 
staff pad demo in real time as you see you see how to fix some things and make some errors you can correct them but you've got some very usable music uh, at the end of the process so i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching